I went to Vegas for my 21st, and it was, yeah. I want to go back. So uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was the first time I've been, so. <clears throat> Lydell is your last name. Mm -hmm. okay. So, see, that's what, oh, well, they changed it. Never mind. But that's what I'll look at. I'll look at the where the words are oh, yeah. whenever I'm talking. See, there are you. Mm -hmm. Oh, they changed it again. <laughs> Never mind. Here we go. All right. Good morning. I'm here with Ryan Lydell for a quick interview. So, Ryan, tell me, what are your favorite sports? What got you involved with sports? Hello. It's good to be here. <laughs> uh, so, I, my two favorite sports are uh, probably football and uh, hockey. Uh, to the sports I played growing up, and uh, I don't know, ever since I've been a little kid, uh, I've just been really into sports. Uh, I think it's partially because of my dad. He's always been a huge sports fan. He's been going to games ever since he was a little kid, and he started that pretty young with me, so I got into that as a tradition every year, and I think really that's where I fell in love with sports, and I would just wake up every morning when I was five, five years old at 5 a.m. to watch Sports Center before school, so after that, I think I really just fell in love with the game after that. So you grew up watching sports with your dad. How do you feel that that, you know, with your relationship with your dad, do you feel like that's something that connects you to? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, it's, uh, like every football season, hockey season, really in baseball, too, um, we always just plan on going to a couple games together and really just has become a tradition every season. So that's I'm something. I'm sure you'll carry that tradition on even when you have children. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. That would be something that would be really cool. Uh, dads going to the game with their sons and stuff and passing on their knowledge of the sport and love of the team and stuff like that. So I always thought that was something really cool that we're going to pass on. Perfect. And now tell me, I know it's become a problem with concussions with football mm -hmm. and hockey players. Mm -hmm. So tell me kind of what do you know about that? What do you think of that? Uh, I mean, it's a really tough thing to, to like discuss and talk about because there's so many aspects that go into it. But obviously, both sports do have a concussion problem because the athletes are bigger and stronger than ever, so they're hitting harder than ever, so causing more brain injuries. But I think there is ways to fix this. But there's also there you can't go too far without changing all the rules of the sport. Which this year, uh, the first big rule change was in college football, where now you can call for a fair catch inside the 25. And it's, you get to touch back so they don't have to return the ball, which is causing concussions, kick returns. So that's like the first big change. But like, I'm hoping it doesn't go too far. But you also got to really worry about these concussions, how it's affecting players long term. For sure. And I've actually seen a few documentaries on players who have died because mm. of oh, these yeah. concussions. Mm. And I know that Nike is now talking about fixing their helmets a little bit, changing mm -hmm. that. Do you think that that could help, or what could they do to change this? Yeah, I think a uh, helmet is a big part of it. I think the helmet's got to be, like, as safe as they can uh, and protecting their heads. But also, I think, especially in football, like, how to tackle. they got to teach these guys how to tackle without leading with their head. you got to see what you hit, and so you keep your head up, and then hopefully that will well, lead to less head contact and more just body contact when these tackles are made. For sure. And now that's something that they should start teaching children when they oh, first yes. start playing. Yeah, they got to start teaching that really young, obviously, because it'd be hard to switch if one way or another, if you learned one way and they had to switch to another way. For sure. Is mm -hmm. there anything else you think there, you could add to this? Or? Uh, I don't think so. I think <laughs> that's that's really perfect. It. That's yeah. great. Thank you so much for giving us your information on this. And uh, of course. that's all for today's, for today's interview with Ryan Lydell. Thank you so much. I move your microphone into the center of your shirt. Oh, okay. Last name is Irvin? Yes. Got it. That's good. And we didn't stop the recorder. Okay. Ryan, you can start whenever you're ready. All right. All right, good morning. We're here with Ivy Irvin this morning to talk about some new things about her. So I hear that uh, you have a new job that is starting up uh, pretty soon. Let's hear about that. Yes, so I am starting a job in Huntsville, Alabama, so not Very moving cool. too far from here. Mm -hmm. I start January 14th as an MMJ for WHNT News. Mm -hmm. So I am very excited. I'll, but, you know, the MMJ job comes with a lot of responsibility. I'll be out on my own, shooting my own video, editing everything, doing live shots on my own for the most part. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I bet. How do you feel about like being out on your own and uh, doing everything by yourself? Yeah, so 
part of me loves it because when you have a photographer, you if you get back to the station, you're editing and there's a problem with you missed something, a great shot or something. It's you can't blame yourself. You mm -hmm. know, it's nothing you can do about yeah. it. But being on your own, you have that responsibility. So I know, wow, that was on me. I mm -hmm. should have done better. So that's what I like about an MMJ. The problem is there's certain situations when it might be dangerous. Oh but yeah, for sure. Luckily with my station, they've told me multiple times, if you're ever in a situation you're uncomfortable with, call in and they'll get a photo photographer out with you. So I'm hoping that they'll stay true to that and hopefully I won't run into any too scary situations out oh, there. Oh yeah, for sure. But um, so obviously the president is not very uh, fond of the media and he's been very vocal about it. So how do you feel about entering the media field in a time like this? So that definitely makes it harder. That uh, definitely puts reporters, anyone in the news field, into a sticky situation. Because now we could put out all the facts and someone could still come at us and say fake news. You mm -hmm. know, it just definitely makes it harder for us. But um, I think that I'm still passionate about the career, about the field, mm -hmm. being in the news. And so I'm still going to, you know, fight through all that and hopefully... Trump won't ever come at me or <laughs> yeah. anything like that. Exactly. I hope so, too. Yeah. But uh, if you could change, like, something about the perspective, like, the national perspective of the media, what would you change? Well, I would just hope that reporters now going forward are being more careful mm -hmm. and are fighting back to show that, you know, put out all the facts there. Yeah. Like, I can prove, I can back this up. Mm -hmm. And so I hope that going forward that I can do that and other people will do that and you know, eventually we'll break this fake news trend yeah. and people will be like, that was crazy. That never happened. Mm -hmm. And it'll be a thing of the past. Yeah. So that's the goal. Yeah, I was going to say with the internet now, uh, fact checking is more important than ever, I yes. guess, with uh, the people in the media. But uh, do you have anything else to add? I think that's all. You asked some good questions. Got right. some good topics out of the way. Well, thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> yes, thank you so much.